Okay, um, greetings everyone. I'm Elaine Duncan, and uh, I'm pleased to be here with you today. Give me a chance to think about the wisdom of acupuncture and Asian medicine and understanding the lung in the, these times we call the times of COVID. Um, I thought perhaps some understanding of Eastern medicine might help inform your experience of the reports from Western medicine about the lung and, uh, and the issues that we're facing. So let's start by just inviting you to find a little bit of comfort. Let yourself, uh, I call it wiggle, shift, or adjust. Anything you need to do to, to just be maybe just one or two or three percent more comfortable. And then, yeah, good. And then just take a moment to see what happens in your muscles or your breath or your mind, your sense of ease. Just take stock of that a little bit. Great. Okay. Okay. So you notice from this picture that I chose for the opening slide, just the really close relationship between the heart and the lung. The heart and the lung, you know, they share this same upper chamber. So they're kind of like close roommates. And um, I think all the information about social engagement and the importance of, of uh, social connection is uh, so clear when you see how intimate the heart and the lungs are to each other. So Asian medicine thinks of the lung as the whole respiratory system, not just uh, these two uh, organs in our chest, but uh, everything from the nose down. And its primary job, the lung's primary job is to, the, the Asian medicine is a little poetic here, is to receive the breath of heaven, to receive the inspiration of the heavens. So the lung is seen as the bookends for life. Our life goes from our first breath to our last breath. And that job of taking what's intangible, taking the breath of heaven, taking the inspiration of heaven and bringing it into our flesh, bringing it into our bodies, it actually has this kind of alchemical function of, of making what's intangible something tangible. The breath is kind of equated with qi, this concept of energy that is the foundation of Chinese medicine. And qi is what helps animate life. So that function of the lung to bring life into our tissues is really its primary function. And um, the reason why it's so, so very important to be able to breathe uh, and to, to be able to have life and, uh, and feel animated. So that function to bring the breath of heavens in means that it helps us, the lungs help us find a spiritual guide in turbulent times. They help us connect with the, the heavenly impulse. The lungs are known as a fragile organ, the fragile organ. It's the organ that's most exposed to the outside world. So most exposed to a cold wind or, or um, a hot wind, like if you work in an overheated uh, factory setting or something like that where you're exposed to heat all the time, it can make your lungs dry and hard. Or, or if you smoke cigarettes, it brings the heat in to your lung and makes them dry and, and uh, you know, a raspy, hot cough can be the result. So um, the lungs are very fragile, very open to the outside world, which makes them very vulnerable to this virus that floats in the air. It has a function to spread the breath of heaven all the way through the whole kingdom of the body, to the, all the way to our skin. So we think of the the skin as a third lung in the world of Asian medicine. Um, we actually breathe through our skin to some extent. The lungs also, each one of the primary organs has a function of housing a particular aspect of soul or a particular, a particular aspect of spirit. And the lungs house the animal soul or the, it's called the po. Um, and this is the aspect of soul that gives us a capacity to be aware and alert of the value of the next moment. 
So in my breath, I notice, is this a good value or is this a bad value? Do I want to continue with this value, with this direction, or do I need to change my vector and, and, and make a different uh, direction for my life? That happens moment by moment, understanding the value of each moment. The colon is paired with the lung. So the colon's job, the lung's job is to receive what's pure, and the colon's job is to let go of what's not pure, what's no longer useful. The classical literature refers to it as being responsible for the transit of the residue of transformations. So that's kind of a, you know, a poetic way to say that we eat food, we transform that food into blood and chi and flesh, and then the residue of that transformation gets left on your front yard by the neighbor's dog or gets flushes down, gets flushed down the toilet. But it makes for um, the colon to be a really critically important organ when it comes time to let go of what's no longer helpful or useful or what has actually gone by. So we could say that, and the, and the Asian medicine would agree, that the emotion, if you were to take that energetic function and turn it into an emotion, that that emotion would be grief, it would be letting go of what's no longer available to us, no longer useful, no longer helpful, no longer here. Grief certainly has the experience of taking it, our breath away and making it hard or challenging to let go. I don't think there's anything that brings us closer to that, our experience of spirit or uh, sometimes I call it our relationship to the tangibly unknowable than the grief that, uh, comes, with, that comes with loss. So the lung and the colon are kind of pals. They operate in tandem with each other, kind of like a, a seesaw. One inhales and the other, and the, the colon is kind of like the exhale. One takes in, one lets go. And they need to be in appropriate relationship with each other. We can't really take in something new if we haven't made space by letting go of what's old, of what's no longer useful or necessary. So it's the letting go that allows the breathing in, and it's the breathing in that empowers the colon to let go. So they operate in, in pair with each other, and we need to be you know, functional in both of those aspects in order to, to, to move through life with comfort and ease. So why COVID now? Why has this, or what's an, a way to, a context to hold or understand why this disease that is so profoundly impactful on our lung, causing a pandemic that's infecting the whole world's people, even those who don't have it are affected by the fact that it's around them, I'm guessing. Um, so my, my sense, my thesis is that even though an individual person's experience of COVID, if they're sick with it, is profoundly personal, there's also a way that this is a world dynamic and that that dynamic exists in a social context of world grief. The field of air, the field of the heavens that everyone is breathing in the whole world is filled with that sense of loss and a longing to find inspiration. When you think about it, I say, many of us, maybe not all of us, but many of us are filled with grief about what's happening in our climate and our, and our world environment in terms of global warming. We're deeply troubled, people in the military community in particular, with the injuries and the fatalities and the suicides in what seems to be an endless experience of war in our country. We're disturbed by violence in our communities, schools, neighborhoods, and in particular that some of that violence seems to be influenced by government officials or government action or inaction, seeming to support the kind of consciousness that gives rise to rogue shooters. And then we have our whole immigrant and migrant situation where people are, have been forced to leave the land of their ancestors, their homes, because of poverty or violence or, or lack of opportunity, and then come and travel and find even more threats to their own survival 
lots of grief there. And then all those insults that come from places where they shouldn't come from about race, gender, ethnicity, ability, um, sexual orientation that can affect our self-worth. And you see, the lung is related in within the, the Chinese cosmology, the acupuncture and Asian medicine cosmology is related to the metal element. And the metal's job is to help us know our value, to help us know that we too are a gem. And when these insults come, it can affect our ability to know that we're a gem. And then that, that insult ends up landing in our lung tissue and kind of hardening and creating a, um, a, a brace or a collapse in our lung tissue that then leaves it more vulnerable to this tiny virus to come and, and, uh, and infect us and take up residence in our lung. So I, I think we reached a tipping point in world grief that allowed this, this pandemic to have its relationship with our lung because of all this grief that we're all trying to manage and cope with and transform. So the good thing is that there is some wisdom. <laughs> there is some wisdom in the traditions of acupuncture and Asian medicine that can help us cultivate vitality in our lung, help us transform grief, help us not just transform our personal grief, but transform that world grief. So that's the main thing I'd like to talk with you today about is what are some things that can inform us and help us individually and as communities and families to work through this experience of world grief that's leaving our lungs so compromised. So the first thing is that lungs want to breathe. Lungs want to breathe. So it's very helpful to have a meditation practice that involves or is engaged with your breath. So take some time in each day, if you can, to clear some time and space, quiet your mind and invite conscious attention to your breath. And then invite those small and big griefs both, start with the small ones, and uh, to move through you. And even invite the tears to come. Invite the inspiration of the heavens to help you. Ask your colon to help you with letting go. And if the tears come, welcome them. Because the more we can allow grief to actually move through and clear out what's no longer available to us or no longer helpful, it creates space for something fresh and clean to move in. We'll do a meditation like this at the end of my presentation to give you an idea about how to do it. Second, the lungs want connection. The lungs want that social engagement response. So unless the lungs have just the right amount of love and joy and laughter, they, they will get brittle. They'll get rigid. They'll get inflexible. The lungs need people. They need joy because otherwise the lungs sort of propensity on their own is to be in connection with the heavens, not so much to be in connection with people. And when they're exclusively in connection with the heavens, they can get brittle and they can forget how important people are, even imperfect people. Um, so we want to keep our lung tissue flexible and soft and, and uh, loving so that we'll be less vulnerable to, to this virus and, and uh, that wants to take up space and weak and brittle lungs. Nurturing our capacity to reduce stress through relationships not only helps our lungs to stay soft and flexible, it also gives us the foundation to resolve conflicts without having to use our more primitive fight, flight, or freeze response. So those of you who feel particularly isolated and, and uh, kind of grief-filled for the lack of connection with neighbors, friends, um, family, um, See if you can't, first off, see if you notice yourself getting a little more cranky than usual. And if you do, make some efforts through Zoom or Skype or a phone call or even um, hugging your, your dog or your cat. Um, find ways to be in connection with somebody or something 
that has a capacity for relationship. And when you do get on Zoom, Zoom, don't make it just functional. Take time to like look in each other's eyes and, and to, you know, enjoy the sense of connection and sink into your heart space so that you can feel the love you have for the people that you're Zooming with. All this will help your, 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 your lung be less brittle and your heart be more active and to help you resolve conflicts through diplomatic measures instead of through fight or flight. So take time to reach out to those who live alone, make special effort to express your love and care for those who you do live with, and take some time to bring to mind the connections you have with various communities or tribes, every person who's in connection with you because this virus has proved more than ever that we're in relationship with each other, that we can't be alone. We're connected to each other. The third thing is that the metal absolutely loves beauty. Metal calls forward the dynamics or quality as precision, inspiration, and longing for connection with the heavens. The energy of the lung reminds us of our gem-like nature. And the more that we can find beauty and find inspiration and find uh, ways to be creative, the more healthy our lung is going to be. So we can't exactly go to the art museum now, but we can get out those old paints, get out the colored pencils, um, engage in creative mask making, make beautiful masks, not just functional masks. Take up your piano again, take up that musical instrument that you set aside years and years ago. Play music, just invite beauty to be around you. This little girl, I mean, look at how her face is just like alive with her experience of the beauty of these bubbles and the, the nature that's all around her. She's immersed in it. She's not thinking about a single worry. All she's doing is being inspired by color and shape and, and, uh, and, and, and the feel of those bubbles around her. See if you can't find that. The fourth thing is to understand that grief is a vibrational experience and it takes shape and and uh, texture in our body's tissues. It's a vibration that's not over when it's over. It continues to move through us. So when you do take that time to meditate and focus on your breath, notice what moves in your system. We want to help support movement of lung energy, movement of breath, movement of grief through our tissues. And that will help us get access to their, those nooks and crannies where grief from maybe from long ago is still living inside us and creating that contraction, that brace, that collapse that leaves our lung more vulnerable to COVID. And I promise you this, and this is because of the vibrational quality of grief. As you move out old griefs and your colon helps you let them go, new space will emerge inside you and you will vibrate a different internal experience out into the world. This is our responsibility for and the relationship for individual healing and corporate or global healing. We're not really alone. When we transform and heal, it impacts everyone around us. We create a better world when we create more space and more flexibility and more capacity in our own inner life. So we change not just ourselves, but we create a, a basis for a change in relationships with everyone that we interact with. So, and we change that vibration. So um, I think that's helpful to way to think about it. Um, it's so very clear now in these times that our lives are so powerfully in each other's hands. And there is uh, certainly a grave danger that I think we're all aware of and probably focus a lot on um, because we're kind of hardwired to notice danger. The, you know, our ancient ancestors who were aware of the saber toothed tiger in the bush first were a very profound asset for, for that tribe. So we're kind of evolutionarily developed 
to look for danger. But there isn't only danger in this period. There's also opportunity. Danger and opportunity are always connected to each other. So we can also orient ourselves, focus our attention on this sense of worldwide connection and care for other people in humanity. And this capacity for the vibration of grief with attention to move and heal our lungs just may support a growing vibration of connection with the world's people, a vibration of respect. You know, the, the lung also has to do with respecting other people, respecting ourselves, respecting other cultures, other traditions, other religions, other, all that other stuff. Find a way to understand and appreciate that we all live inside our own skin and have different, different ways of expressing our culture and so forth. And if we can find a way to respect that, there'll be less need for us to use that fight or flight response to resolve conflicts in the world. So my prayer is that it will, this movement can give rise to whatever insight and inspiration is necessary for some heroic and powerful action for the good of all of humanity to arise in some members of, of, our, of our community and our culture. So I'm gonna, before we go there, I'm gonna take a, I'd like to take a few minutes to help us go through a little guided meditation to access our own bodies and our own uh, lung and colon and the movement of grief. So if you're willing to join me, I invite you to. And if you'd like to just listen, that's fine too. But let's have you go first to that question we started with about finding the place of comfort. Let yourself wiggle, shift, or adjust whatever you need to, to be one or two or 3% more comfortable. And you don't have to change your breath in any way, but just do bring your mind or your awareness to your breath. Notice the inhale and the pause and the exhale and the pause. And just noticing when the impulse to inhale again comes and let it just organically emerge out of your own tissues, your own impulse to breathe. And the same with that exhale after the pause at the top. Without forcing your exhale, just allow it to let go at its own pace in its own time. And let yourself go through several cycles of breath, allowing your breath to breathe you, allowing the impulse of heaven to move through without any effort at all on your part, no direction, just coming and going. And then if you'd like, bring one hand up to your chest over your lungs and invite the attention that your hand brings to sink into your lungs. See what you find in your lungs. Is there a color or a sense of movement or stillness, either one? Check in with how your lungs are with receiving the inspiration of the heavens. Invite the inspiration of the heavens to come into your lungs. And 
look for connection with whatever sense of spirit speaks to you. Invite those spirits, the presence of maybe an ancestor, something or someone that's who's a gem in your life. And see what changes in your experience of the lungs. Kind of see if you can cultivate eyes on the palm of your hand so you can see into your lung. And just stay with whatever emerges. And then let's have you take your other hand and put it over your colon. Take some time to find the place in your lower belly that feels like the right place to connect with your colon. And invite your, your hand to bring some support to that colon that's so desperately trying to let go of these griefs. Let the strength in your lung come to your colon. and bring support for transforming and letting go of grief. There may be some gurgles that arise or some changes in your breath or some images may come, meaning, meaning making. Just allow whatever comes to come. And when you feel complete, You can slowly and gently say farewell to your lung and your colon, knowing that they're there for you all the time and always serving you. Give some thanks. You might tell them you'll be back again to check in with them and offer your support and care. Yeah. And then you can bring your hands back to wherever they feel most comfortable. And when you feel ready, uh, open your eyes and come back together. Yeah, nice. So I've just got one more slide and then we'll open up to some questions or reflections or comments. Um, just want to share with you that a lot of this material comes from a book that I wrote with my, my colleague, Kathy Kane, called The Tao of Trauma. And uh, if you're interested in more about this kind of material, please uh, take a look at it. It's available on Amazon or wherever you buy your books online because you're not going to the store. <laughs> it's great having been with you. Thank you very much.